In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. It's with great sadness and heavy hearts that we gather here this morning to say farewell to Jerry. None of us would wish to be here, but the tragedy that has come to us calls us to gather together to love and support each other. And by our presence together, we also ask in prayer for God's support and his peace for all of us today, but most especially for Jerry's family, all those who grieve his loss. 
And so we ask God's comfort for all of you, but most especially for Mary, Jerry's wife, his sons, Jerry, Paul, David, Joseph, Brian, and Jamie, for Sean and Donna too, and his grandchildren, Nikita, Jack, Emily, Ben, Amy, and Lexi, for his brother Hugh and sisters Kathleen, Jean, Claire, and Lucy, his brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, nephews and nieces, relatives and friends. This past week has been difficult, but there are things that have brought consolation, our memories of Jerry and who he was for each one, for each one of us, and the knowledge too that others have had the chance of life from the harvesting of his tissue and organs, and that even in death as he was in life, he could be a source of joy and happiness for the recipients of his goodness. As we gather this morning, we're going to reflect on just how good Jerry was in his love and generosity, with his time and with his energies. And we're going to bring to the sanctuary now just some symbols of the character and friend that he was to us all. And Brian is going to tell us a little bit about their significance. The first item that it has is a welding mask. That's going to be brought up by Ben. The mask signifies the work he's done all over the years with steel fabrication and the same work that went into his family. Ben done an awful lot of work with Dad. He would have been proud of him. The next item up is an Aston Villa top. That's going to be brought up by Lexi. That's to signify his club in, and where he was married in Birmingham, signifying his love for the club, Aston Villa, and the love for his family too. The third item to be brought up is his John Prine CD. Because without his music, he just, wouldn't have, he just wouldn't have been the man he was. He left us with great sounds and a great taste of music. Lexi, or Amy's going to bring it up for us now. And last but not least, one of his treasured items that was given to him recently by his county. He used to love following his county team around, so he did Mead. And he'd bring anyone in the match at all. There'd be 40 lads in the car heading up the road. And as Ian Tindall said, he reminded me that the other night that he come back through by breaking beep and the horn all the time after he bet them. And that cherished item must be brought up by Michael McQuillan, one of, his, one of his good family friends and best friends. And I know a man that's heartfelt to bring it up and a man that's honoured too. And Dad would have been proud of that. That signifies his work for the community and Michael's honour to give it to him for his county. That was that in a nutshell. He'd bring anyone anywhere and do anything for anybody. And it's testament to everyone that's here today that, that that is true. On a Monday morning, that so many people turned out is what he'd torn out for anybody. That's the truth. He's a great father of six of us boys and a loving wife, my mother and our mother. And I'm sure all of you understand that there's no possible words you could put it into at all. But if one thing that Dad did show everybody was that family was stronger than a lot of other things that you can build with a welder. And that's as simple as that. The man was a fighter, so he was a lion. He just did do anything for anybody. And six, six of us boys are a testament to that as well. There's a bit of him in all of us. And his grandkids he adored. That's all I have to say about the man. The rest speaks for itself.
The readings that we we'll hear in our Mass today are readings that promise new life. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. Nothing can come between us and the love of God. And the Gospel that we we'll hear is the story of the Transfiguration. Jesus had already told his friends that he was going to suffer and die. And this came as a surprise to them because they thought he was going to be a great leader and lead them in battles and victories where the enemy would be overthrown. And so they're confused when Jesus says he's going to suffer and die. And so he takes them up a mountain and he lets them see his glory. There will be a battle, there will be suffering, there will be death, but afterwards there will be resurrection and new life. The gospel today gives us a glimpse of what will be, not just what is to be for Jesus in his resurrection, but what will be for all of us and for Jerry today. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life, so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Jerry to be inscribed in the book of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. So now we're going to listen to our readings from the scriptures and Sean is going to read the first one. And then after the psalm is sung, Lucy will read the second. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us, like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affection. Great will be their blessing be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over people's lives, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Nothing can really come between us and the love of Christ. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No, he not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked, these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth nor any created thing can ever come between us the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed and his clothing became brilliant as lightning. Suddenly there were two men there talking to him. There were Moses and Elijah appearing in glory, and they were speaking of his passing, which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep, but they kept awake and saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here, so let us make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. As he spoke, a cloud came and covered them with shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silence and at that time told no one what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Please be seated for a few moments. <clears throat> It was a story once of a stream that was working its way across the country. At the start, it had little difficulty. It ran around rocks, it ran down mountains, it ran through forests. And then one day, it arrived at the desert. Just as it had crossed every other barrier, it tried to cross this one. But after many attempts, it became discouraged. It seemed that the journey that began in joy would end in frustration. And then a voice came in the wind. If you stay the way that you are, you will never cross the sands. You'll never be more than a swamp. To go further, you have to lose yourself. But cried the stream, I don't want to lose myself. If I, will do, if I do, I'll never know what it was I was supposed to be. Oh, quite the contrary, said the voice. Lose yourself and you will be more than ever thought possible. And so the stream surrendered to the desert sun. The stream rose up as a vapour, then a mist, then a cloud, until a racing wind came along and drove it across the desert. 
And finally cloud gathered and grew bigger and bigger until it burst and the rainwater poured down. It became the stream once again, fresh and clean, invigorated with the energy of the storm, full of new life, beginning a new adventure. We understand parts of the gospel better when we see them in context. And the gospel today isn't haphazard in the way that the story is told. Luke is very careful in the way that he sequences the events. When we put the parts of the gospel together, we get a complete picture. And just before Jesus takes his friends up on the mountain, he had predicted that he was going to suffer and die. Luke couldn't have found a better event than the transfiguration to show what will follow the passion. Like the stream in the story, Jesus through suffering will be transformed and will find new life. Suffering and death will lead to resurrection and to glory. The transfiguration confirms Jesus as the Messiah, but it also confirms something about each of us. For we too, like the stream in the story, run into things that we can't avoid. Like Jesus, we have our share of suffering and our taste of death. In the gospel, we're told that also like Jesus, we will have our share of resurrection and new life. Yes, suffering and death come to us in life, but they don't come alone. In their wake comes resurrection and the putting of everything to rights. The Gospels tell us that if we as followers of Jesus choose the way of Jesus, giving totally of ourselves, we will also share the glory of Jesus. No one who has read the condolences online or who has spoken to anybody who knew Jerry over the past week could be in any doubt that Jerry gave totally of himself. A great father who provided so much for his big family through thick and thin. There was no neighbour or family member who was left in want when Jerry was near. He was gifted with a benevolent heart and a very kind soul. And there was nothing that he couldn't put his hands to. He was a problem solver. If there was something that he couldn't do, then he'd research it until he did know what to do. Like, for instance, plumbing his own house, multi-fueled. And then the pipes meeting together and a bit of a conflict. There must be a solution to this, he thought. And so he got the plumbing book and studied it for a few months. And then he had the answer. And then he was an expert and could fix everyone's plumbing. Or whatever it was. Panel beating their cars. Building a wheelchair ramp for the neighbours. There was nothing that would faze him and nothing he couldn't fix. As Jer wrote, his tools, which were many, were his ideal of gold, and with them he could work wonders. And if family wanted anything, he did his very best to source it. Sometimes it wasn't possible and he might have to improvise. We were talking the other day about the time when a couple of the lads wanted American football helmets for their, their gifts. There was no Amazon.com back then and not one to be found in this country, so Jerry had to be inventive. And so he bought two motorcycle helmets and welded a metal grid onto the front to guard the face and should the lads were delighted. Playing football out on the green with their heads almost falling out off them with the weight of the helmets. Busher was like a dream come true for the kids. And of course, as Brian mentioned, he loved all those matches and all the coming back from Croke Park after Mead victories beeping all the way through Balbriggan. I'm not sure if he was looking down at the matches yesterday, but if he was, it was probably Aston Villa that he had the influence with their two late goals. There are so many memories that people have of Jerry, the way that he came to the help of everyone and was adored by everyone. And most of all, of course, by Mary, who he married in Birmingham almost 50 years ago. 
I know that Mary claims that she raised Jerry as well as the kids because he was so young when they married, only 17. And even though he enjoyed very much playing football in the sitting room when Mary was out, when he was supposed to be doing the cleaning, together you were a great partnership, the best of companions, and he adored you and endured all his family, always putting your needs first with that big and generous heart. And like the stream in our story at the beginning, he gave all of himself so that we could all enjoy life and experience some of life's joys. It's only natural that we would be heartbroken today, but anger isn't ours, because even though Jerry would search and search to fix any problem in this world, illness was one of the things that was out of his power to fix, and it troubled him greatly. We pray today that his trouble is now over, as he encounters the Lord, who is the only one who can make sense of suffering and death, because he himself was through it and rose again. This is what we continue to celebrate in the church during this season of Easter. God doesn't mean suffering to be an end. The Gospel of the Transfiguration tells us that. God created us for life here and for eternal life in heaven. May the Lord shine his light upon our darkness today to see the bright promise his call holds for us. And may he take Jerry into his loving care and place him with all those we love who have passed before us. May he remind us always that death is not the end and that we shall greet each other joyfully once again when we are united again in the realms of glory. Until then, we pray for Jerry. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. I invite you all to stand now as we have the prayers of the faithful. So those who are doing the prayers can come forward now. And let us pray with confidence and trust in the power of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and whose promise is that one day we shall be like him. For all young people full of idealism and energy that they may find focus and meaning in the gospel to build their lives. God hear us. For the family and friends of Jerry who shared a long life with them, that God may now strengthen them through their love for each other and their faith. Lord, hear us. For the management and staff of Lord's Hospital, that the Lord will continue to bless them in their walk and reward their kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord God, whose days are without end and whose mercies are beyond counting, keep us mindful that life is short and the hour of death unknown. Let your spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of holiness and justice, that we may serve you in union with the whole church, sure in faith, strong in hope, perfect in love. And when our earthly journey is ended, lead us rejoicing into your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Please be seated now as our gifts of bread and wine are brought to the altar and Caleb and Emily are going to bring the gifts.
Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Jerry, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Jerry, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And please stand now. <clears throat> and Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we now have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
our communion reflection Joe is going to read if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give your way to hating. And yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can beat to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you will be a man, my son.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Jerry may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Jerry, and now we come to the last farewell. There's sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Jerry again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. The response to our ancient song of farewell is receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Jerry in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Jerry in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother Jerry forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And in peace now, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
Yeah.